Hey guys, Trev here from SpineWise. Um, today I want to continue our riding series on how to get your life back in, get fit again using cycling. Today I want to talk to you about a really common problem that I often hear from all the cyclists I work with, whether it be people who are just recreational cyclists, whether it be kids, um, and all the way up to even the pro end cyclists that I've worked with over the years as well. Um, and that is how to stop yourself from going numb when riding, because it's a really, really common problem. Uh, I hear it all the time from all levels of riders, um, and it can be a very scary thing for a lot of people, especially for men themselves, when you're starting to lose uh, sensation right around your genitalia and into the inner parts of your leg as well. Um, if you do like our videos, please like, share, um, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's always great to know that people are watching us. It's just the easiest way we can get information out to you guys and help as many people as possible uh, to get advice who may not be able to get it otherwise. All right, so let's get started. So how do we actually go numb and how does it actually occur in cycling? Because it is a very scary thing um, if you've never had it before and just started riding and now you're feeling that, you're getting that numb feeling. Uh, in, in men can go right through your reproductive system. Um, I know when I first started riding years and years and years ago before I got myself sorted out, like I had days where I spent three or four hours in a saddle and I had numbness going all the way down the inner part of my leg. Like it can be really profound for some people. So let's have a look at the basic neurology. Um, of what's actually happening because the numbness really generally is caused by compression of nerves. You're actually squashing the nerves uh, that go down into those areas and that's really what's driving that level of, of um, discomfort that you're feeling. So down the bottom of your sacrum, down this area here, there's a group of nerves that come out which form what we call you pu your pudendal nerves. And your pudendal nerves are one of the more important nerves in the human body. These are the ones that look after your reproductive system in particular, uh, especially as it relates to bladder function and to, um, and to urinary function and to um, uh, reproductive health as well. Really, really important set of nerves. And if you have a look at those nerves, I'm just gonna clear this off the screen. Um, if you have a look at where those nerves sit, uh, come on, why are you not working for me? If you have a look at where those nerves sit over there, really what we're talking about are these nerves that come through this bottom area here and this nerve in particular that comes through here. So that's our pudendal nerve, the one that comes right through that area. And look how close it sits to these bones here. It's right near those bones. Um, and whilst when we talk about saddles, uh, we might talk about sitting positions in your sit bones, which are, are these bones here, these two bones here. Uh, and we talk about how they fit in relation to a saddle, so how our sit bones should sit in this area here. In reality, for most people when you're riding uh, and you're leaning forward, especially if you're on a road bike where you've got a forward posture or a time tilt style bike, uh, lesser to um, your standard kind of commuter bikes where you're more upright, but definitely on mountain bikes as well, what you'll find is that the bulk of the weight is actually coming forward through this area here and not so much in these back areas here. Uh, so you don't really have weight on your sit bones, they're kind of slightly forward of your sit bones. So when we look at that from a structural perspective, what we're really talking about is having the bulk of your weight coming actually along this bone here and along this bone here. So it's sitting along the underside of those bones. And unfortunately, as you can see, that nerve, that pudendal nerve, runs right underneath that as well. So when we're sitting down, what has happened over a period of time is we compress that nerve and we compress the area, that whole soft tissue bundle called your perineum in that area there. And as we cause that compression, we uh, squash the nerve and we don't allow for proper neurological transmission. And this is what tends to create that numbness feeling right through that area. So how do we go about it? What do we do about changing this around? Well, there's plenty of different things we can do. So we can start with the saddle itself. So if we look at the saddle, one of the things we need to understand is that this area here is somewhat flat. So we've got tissue that comes straight across this area here called your perineum. That's coming straight across there. So what we wanna make sure is that if we have a flat saddle that sits across there as well, everything is gonna be compressed up and we're gonna push into this area here. And it's compression in that middle area which is what's creating all the issues for us. So we wanna avoid that. So the first thing we can do is we can get ourselves saddles that have a nice big wide opening on it. So our modern day saddles now have all this area through here very much opened up. 
So it's a kind of a slit that runs right through there. And the good thing about having a slit that runs right through there is that slit will allow your perineum, this area here, to just hang down into the space of the saddle. Just allows it to drop through. Um, and taking the pressure right off that area, allowing the area to breathe um, and allowing uh, for those pudendal nerves to clear out. For men, this is really important uh, because the actual base of the penis runs right through here. There's a big circle that runs through there. Uh, so that gets compressed very easily. And with women, uh, the labia sit through that area as well on either side and that can create irritation. So having this area open relieves a lot of pressure off that area and opens it right up. Next thing we want to do is when we're looking at uh, clothing, if you're wearing clothing that has a really thick amount of padding in it, a, a really higher, so a lot of people want to go out and get really thick, what we call chamois, which sit inside your, your bike shorts, really thick ones because it's much more comfortable. If you have that thickness, what will happen is uh, the area of chamois that's sitting under here will compress the area sitting here will compress and the result is you end up with a dome like that. And that dome, again, as you sit down for a period of time, will start compressing that area. So when we're looking at our chamois uh, and, and bike shorts, make sure you don't go too thick, okay? If we go too thick, we're gonna create that same level of compression. Likewise with saddles, the thicker we go with the saddle, the more likely we are, especially if you don't have that slit down the middle, the more likely we are to have that stuff come up and irritate that perineum directly and create a whole lot of problems for yourself in terms of compression. So there's some pretty basic things that we can look at. Uh, a couple of other things I said before. Number one, reduce the cushioning both of your saddle and of your um, and of your um, uh, bike shorts. Uh, there are a lot of good quality shorts now that you can get that have very thin quality chamois, uh, sorry, very thin chamois that have a very high quality, which will still give you shock absorption and still stop the irritation. Uh, but at the end of the day, the best thing you can do to stop um, saddle soreness from just sitting down for long periods of time and getting sore bones from the pressure is to just break it in, get used to it, slowly do more Ks on a bike and eventually you'll start getting used to it, you'll harden up those tissues in those areas, uh, the sensitivity will decrease and it won't be a problem for your sit bones on those surfaces. So if you go too cushioned, whether it be on the saddle or on your chamois, you're gonna end up with problems through that area. Uh, the open slit saddle, as we said before, nice open wide down the middle is gonna make it so much easier, give you space to breathe and allow those pudendal nerves to sit inside the saddle rather than getting squashed on it. Um, the saddle, the seat height, so this is your actual saddle height. So we've already spoken about that previously. Go back and have a look at my videos uh, from earlier. Um, the saddle height is really important. So if we're getting too high with our saddle, we're reaching down. If we're reaching down, again, we're gonna get compression. So we're gonna get one leg dropping off too far or the other, and we're gonna get that drop. Every time we hit to the bottom of the pedal stroke, um, we're gonna be pushing down on that perineum again and irritating it. So we need to make sure we have the correct saddle height and that's irrelevant of whether you're outside on the road or you're on an exercise bike. Saddle width is something that we often don't talk about much, but saddle width is actually really important. So when I say saddle width, I'm talking about the distance from here to here, right across that area there. So when we look from behind, everyone has a different size pelvis. So women uh, have pelvises from here to here that are much wider than men, and that's just because of childbirth. So it gives them the opportunity to give birth, Men have pelvises that are much narrow, much more upright. Uh, so a male pelvis uh, requires a male saddle. A female pelvis requires a female saddle. Uh, and even inside those saddles, there is a little bit of variation in terms of width. And there's a whole lot of different ways we can check for it. But making sure saddle width is right for you um, is really, really critical as well, okay? And, and the saddle that's too narrow, especially if, for the women, if you guys are, um, uh, our females, if you're um, trying to ride on a male saddle, there's a good chance you're gonna create irritation and problem for yourself, so you don't wanna be doing that. Um, and the, uh, the last one, of course, uh, oh, we lost an N there. The last one is our position, okay? And that's the actual bike position that you're in. So the further forward you are, uh, the more pressure you're gonna put onto your perineum compared to coming upright. 
so we need to make sure that our bike setup is good. So if we're leaning too far forward, we're going a long way forward and we're, getting, um, uh, we're not getting proper rotation through your lower part of your spine, that extension that we need as we go through. This is again gonna create compression through that front area there and create problems. Um, there's a ton of different saddles that now come with curvatures built in them. Uh, your Sally SMPs were one of the first, one of the most popular, where they have a little bit of a beak coming through it. Uh, and that little bit coming through it allows the pelvis to sit into a layer to get a little bit further forward and drop a little bit further down as well uh, while still keeping the pressure off with a nice big open uh, slot down the middle. So there's a few things guys. Uh, reduce the cushioning both your saddle and your um, bike shorts. Uh, make sure you've got a saddle with a nice wide open uh, split down the middle. There are plenty of bike stores around now that will allow you to try saddles. Um, so um, don't be afraid to try different saddles. And yes, they can be quite expensive, but remember, if you're gonna really truly spend a lot of time riding, this is the place you're gonna have more contact with than anything else, so it needs to be comfortable. Uh, make sure your seat height is correct. Go back and have a look. We've already spoken to that on previous videos. Uh, your saddle width, remember, men need a male saddle, women need a female saddle. It's very different. Uh, and also check your position. If we're too far forward and we're reaching too far down, we're gonna start getting a lot of pressure on that front party perineum and you're gonna start going numb again as well. Uh, well, that's it for me, guys. Uh, if you have any questions on all this in any way, shape, or form, please just message me. Um, post up down below if you would like me to talk about anything else to do with bikes. We'll run through them uh, in terms of preventing injury and getting yourself fit and everything like that. Um, the one thing that I haven't spoken about because it's not directly tied in with all this in terms of these numbers is change your position often, if, especially if you're on a road bike. Change your position often, um, and that'll help you out tremendously. Is go from sitting to standing up out of the pedals to going down. Just getting movement, allowing. Uh, blood flow and, um, and neurological flow through that area with slight changes in your body posture whilst you ride can also help this as well. All right, guys, that's it for me for now. If you have any questions at all, please post them up. Um, send me a message. Always happy to help out. Uh, my team's always here for you in any way, shape, or form uh, that you need us. Um, otherwise, uh, please like, share, and subscribe to our videos. Uh, it does really mean a lot to us if you do so, um, and uh, also makes us realize that we're actually out there and we are helping people as well. Anyway, guys, thanks for your attention today, and uh, we'll catch you in the next vid. Bye for now.